Okay, hello everyone. We're back with another episode of Six of One, Half a Dozen of the Other. I'm Rachel, your host, and I'm here with <laughs> Emmett O'Brien, <laughs> Greg Clifford, Ooh. and the poet Jeff. And uh, guys, what have you been doing this week during lockdown? What's been your uh, number one activity? Mm. I went drinking cans in the park at the weekend with uh, a couple of good mates. Really? <laughs> what kind uh, of and then I went off for a cycle. I went off for a cycle today, but I didn't put any sunscreen on, and I had a head like a baboon's arsehole now. Yeah, <laughs> I've got as, as well, Greg. And it's uh, after saw me in two. Uh, I really need to get myself a new a new saddle. I've been. I never thought I'd ever do this in my life, but I've been googling what saddles are the best for your hole. So yeah. <laughs> You're up on that saddle. <laughs> it's all the bollocks off yourself. Find <laughs> yourself with a bit of bleeding the car on me. <laughs> Look at the bleeding state you're there, and you're asking me to to uh, have a bit of decorum. <laughs> you're almost in here talking Emma. about what's on me how? Sorry, Rachel, go on. Emma, is there a packet of Pringles hidden behind your pillow there? <laughs> <laughs> it is too, yeah. <laughs> I don't like to have just the one flavour, I like to have two of them. You couldn't. What have you mostly been doing this week during lockdown? Well, I've been eating Pringles, but I found this new method. It's you get one cheese and onion and one salt and vinegar, and then you put them uh, on top of each other and have it. Um, other than that, I have been uh, just drinking cans and watching Pornhub Premium. Good stuff, glad you're using that account. Okay, so this week's question starts with um, how utilitarian do you think you are? So I'm just going to go through that a little bit, break it down just so we're all on the same page. So uh, utilitarianism is the idea that we should all behave or act in the way that causes the greatest amount of good for the most amount of people. I'd say I'd be pretty high on that. Yeah, I kind of like, um, I kind of like an equal society. Like, I, I think I would be certainly a socialist in my views, and uh, I try to do things that don't put other people out. You know, when I'm enjoying stuff, I try not to impact others too much. I try. I, I like the world to be kind of. I like everybody to be happy and be content. So yeah, that would be how I did my life. Okay, so just to be clear, it's it's the greatest amount of good for the most amount of people. So that means if there's a minority, uh-huh. then they're a little bit left, left behind. behind. Oh. Yeah. Right, that's after trauma spanner in the works. <laughs> Great. Okay, I'm making most people happy, that's all that fucking matters, you're all right. You're a champagne socialist raffle. That's all you are, you're a champagne socialist. <laughs> I'm you know, all for it, Rachel. I'm all for it. Someone has to bite a bullet. Fuck it. Someone, there's always going to be a negative. So I'm, I'm, with, I'm with what you're putting out there. Because we're all minorities in a way. So we're all going to get done dirty. But then at the same time, we're going to benefit off a lot of things as well. What about, I mean, if you were the minority, so that the greatest amount of good was for everybody else, which would mean that you were the person that it impacted most? Oh, well... Well, uh, like, to be honest with you there, I don't really appreciate that question because that would imply that I am someone who is always of privilege. I believe everybody in some cases are of a minority and then some cases are privileged. It's not a black and grey, it's not a black and white thing. Like, you don't either, you don't always have pri- privilege or a majority or be part of a majority or you're not. You know, you're part of a majority in some cases and then you're not part of a majority in other cases, but that's all it is, you know? It was that there was a decision to be made and it was going to impact, say, Dublin 7. But the, per- the the only people that were going to be put out were the people in your estate. But it was going to really make it make the, the Dublin 7 a much better place for everybody else, but all of you were going to be made homeless. 
Was he yeah, but this, with yeah, but like this is what I'm trying to say. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like if you are a part. That's why I'm saying if you are part of the majority, then grind your buzzing with it. And if you're part of the minority, you're gonna face the hardships of it. But depending on the situation, that differs. So I mean, like, yeah, in that situation, I would be part of a minority. So obviously, I'm not gonna want that. But if I was part of fucking Dublin Seven and I was the estate that wasn't getting thrown out, I wouldn't really give two shits. You know, uh, like. Simple as, do you know what I mean? It's something that affects you. Simple. You're bad, dude. Do you know, Greg. to be a utilitarian, it's it's quite quixotic, isn't it? <laughs> word of the day, baby, word Greg. of the day. Greg, word of the week. <laughs> <laughs> word of the week, should I say. But, um... Uh, well, yeah, can you just elaborate on that then a little bit, what you mean? Because nobody it's understands, true. Greg. What's that? Because nobody understands what the word means. Oh, you need a, a, descri- like a, a definition. It, would- it means highly idealistic. Okay. Yeah, let the man explain himself, you champagne socialist. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> In what way, though, would you say that it's idealistic? To be... Well, like... Well, I suppose I'm kind of coming from maybe uh, egalitarian. Do you know, the whole thing is actually any kind of class system or uh, structures and all that. They can be kind of broken down and you can kind of break away from them. So even to be a minority, you can find some kind of strength or some kind of way that you can become a majority within that uh, small ecosystem anyway. So I don't know what I say that I'm, I, I wouldn't say that I am utilitarian at heart, really. I'd be more kind of trying to do the best I can do in every given situation. So actually maybe my point is I'm being idealistic in that mindset because there comes a point where you do have to go shit a side has to be taken here what's the greater good but sometimes the greater good for you could be what's better for the majority anyway that's what i'm trying to say it's all about it's about a personal it's about a personal preference due to uh or depending on the situation that's happening here you know and i think it's completely uh, i think at some level all of us are you are you are you what's it you you, utilitarian utilitarian Utilitarian, yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, so everyone is in a way because that's human behavior. You know, what I mean, if if it's, if 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 something impacts you in a positive way and you're part of a majority, I think everyone turns the blind eye depending on the situation. Now, obviously, there's extremes that people wouldn't turn the blind eye to, but I think for the most part, on little things, if it's something that positively affects you, they're just gonna go with it. I think it completely depends on the the, the situation, but everyone's fucking utilitarian or whatever in some way yeah and, you, well, I mean, yeah, and that's the thing the way Sorry, Rachel, you, you may not feel you may feel bad about your decision to follow the, the minority or the, the majority sorry but if like it's kind of like even when you're out with a, a group of mates and if someone's picking on you you're like ah shit i'm getting done in here i'm getting snared but if someone else is the, is the root of the joke you're kind of you, you might feel a bit bad about it but you're like once the attention's not on me i'm happy to run with this i'm happy yeah, to be yeah. utilitarian in the social construct Mm-hmm. So can, can you give us more kind of like, like what kind of scenarios are we talking, Rachel? Like what? Yeah, so like, I'm just, so like, I guess the, the three kind of main, uh, the established parts of, of being utilitarian is that everyone's happiness matters equally. So would you agree or disagree with that? And how, could, how can you justify that considering what you have just said? Because how could everyone's happiness exist if it only affects the majority anyway? So there is no everyone happy. But do you but do you believe that everyone's happiness, like, is equally important? I mean, I, I guess so. But it's it's kind of like an immeasurable thing because what's happy for one person might actually be just contentedness for another. Sorry to get nebulous and shit like that, but a book. But I, mean, I, I jumping in there, Greg. No I, yeah. I, I don't think it's immeasurable either you know like so like on this point as much as i would really 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 like to dis like distance myself from emma but i think he's like right on this one which is like mind blown for me because emma's right because i think like even in my life where like stuff like how ethically kind of how ethical of a consumer am i you know like a lot of the time i'd buy stuff without really thinking about the repercussions of, of how it's after getting to me. I try and do a bit, but am I there all the time? No, and there's probably some, you know, you, you've bought, like, your phone, your computer, there's probably some 
kid making it in the other part of Asia and you don't really give it an awful lot of thought. But I'm connected to the rest of the world, so it's it's easy for me to do that. The same with buying like food. You, you know, what I mean, if I was really, if I was, you know, if I had these very strong beliefs about you know utilitarianism, um, I would be completely organic, completely local, buying everything as close to me. But a lot of the time, when I'm when I'm in the shop, I get the stuff that's you know cheap and on on sale to save myself some money. Mm-hmm. How how can how can anyone how, just going back to a point there, uh, how can you say that everybody deserves happiness equally? No, I said that everybody's happiness sh- is should be considered equal. No, absolutely not. So that if I, if so, for example, my happiness is more important than yours. No, uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, definitely, I think so. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think if you're my happiness is more important than yours. I think so. No, no, no. But everybody's happiness is like it's like self worth. Like, like let's be honest about things. Like I want to see. Right, I guess the question well. is, could it be valued the same? No, well, I want to see everyone happy, and I'll do whatever it takes to make someone happy. But at the end of the day, I'm. All, I, I was just saying that, you, like. Everyone, like I want to see everyone do well, but at the same time, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna value my happiness higher than anyone else's, and I think that's completely natural. It's human behaviour, like, and I think anybody who turns around and says, "I always think everyone else's happiness comes before me," is just it, they're a spiel for like, you know, there's nothing so, wrong with it. But Emma, so what you're saying is your your happiness is number two, and then Rachel is number one, is it? No, my <laughs> happiness is number one, and okay. Rachel's is number two. See, I think, Rachel, this, this is what I mean more so actually by it being idealistic. It's that it, it's difficult to, to kind of give everyone equal happiness. Okay, well, naturally it, happiness comes in different ways. But or do you, sorry, we'll say it again. It's, it's the importance. Everyone's, no, it's that everyone's happiness counts equally. So that it should be considered in an equal way. Yeah, I so think that's, I'm I mean, not I going, that's okay, these standpoint. people deserve to be happier more than these people but if you disregard someone's happiness to fulfill your own does that mean that you value them equally because i would i would assume that you wouldn't but i wouldn't put that as a negative thing like there's a packet of meanies left on the shelf and there's only one right this is this is a prime example of it Mm -hmm. and you you went to the shop specifically for a packet and then someone else is standing there and they want that packet are you going to take it or are you just going to be like i'll make it one well Well, sometimes you'd give it to them but a lot of the time you take it for yourself does that mean that their happiness isn't as as worthy as your happiness that's my next point you've actually skipped ahead a bit there Emmett. so right let's say right Emmett really loves tesco value pounds and pringles Greg, you love it all. I don't know pizza, some cans. I don't know Jeff, you love your uh, ice cream. I <laughs> love red wine, right? So we're in the shop, okay, and uh, we're all there. It's down to the last bottle of red wine, say. But I really like red wine, and you guys only kind of like it. So I'm gonna be way more happy if you let me buy that bottle of wine. Like I'll get more happiness out of it than you guys will. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm very comfortable letting you have the red wine. Yeah, so you yeah. let me have it. I'm, yeah, less, I'm less content about the fact that I just get pizza and no alcohol in this. So I might have cans first. Cans, pizza, yeah. cans, pizza. Oh, am I allowed to have the cans? I thought. Yeah, the cans yeah. I said can, it was actually comedy. If you have the wine, can we have the cans? Well, let's say the like the situation is different than for you, Emmett. Like it's it's cans. Okay. So what what's the point that you're making? Is the point that you're making here that? But that Emma, why are you changing your bed clothes in the middle of the podcast? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm just putting a pillow cover on. Uh, like the thing is, though, if I'm, if I like, if, if, am I going for? I know. Like the thing, you're all right with the red wine because that's you like that. I'm, yeah, but I'm, it's not. It's like you have to imagine it's a pure scenario. So. We're in the shop. For you, Emma, it's cans, right? There's some cans. You are going to be way happier than any of us if we get the cans. Like, the cans give you more happiness than cans give me, right? For me, exactly, it's red exactly. For Jeff, yeah. it's ice cream. For Greg, yeah. it's also cans and also pizza together. <laughs> yeah, but he's right. not getting my cans. Yeah, but this is it. There's only... There's I'm only not necessarily your cans, pal. 
No, no, no. They are my cans, and he wouldn't be getting. You can have the red wine because I don't drink wine. But if they cans, I am having the cans, and it's simple as that. Rachel, can I ask how many cans are there? There's only there's only one can in this scenario. One oh, can. You can have it. I, I, never, I, never, I never just drink a singular can. Emma yeah, can have it. Wipe wine. me ass with one can for fuck's sake. So there's <laughs> elements so it's, like, it's a six pack, but you're they're like the kind of six pack that you can not be sold individually. Like it's a whole whole or nothing. I give three to Greg. Have three me. You're not allowed to. Oh, then fuck him. I'm a show. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, fuck, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going down to Tesco in case they, they sell out. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're in a predicament there. You know, we yeah, might, we so might em, have to... Emmett's, Emmett's sticking with what he said earlier. He, his happiness is more important to him than anyone else's happiness. It's the truth he's ever said in his life. That's exactly it, how he feels. Yeah, but fuck off, man. It's not a bad thing at all. Like, what do you mean? Like, you it's have to... Like, you... Nah, fuck off, man. You can't love anyone if you don't love yourself. Real Paul says that. How the hell are you gonna love anyone else if you don't love yourself, bitch? How, <laughs> bitch, I, hold on, man. You can love other people as much as you love yourself, though. I mean, sometimes you need to be able to just put yourself second and say, okay, for the, the greater good here, I'll do this to make this person happy because you know their happiness in this instance is more important than mine. Yeah, but it's always good to have a mix of that. But what Rachel is saying here is that you can't. That's why I said, can I give him three and have three? But Rachel oh. said, "Look, you can't do that. So it's 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 a dog eat dog world. It's 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 fucking prey or predator. And I'm not going to be now in fish. So I'm taking the cans. Can we just can we just applaud the nipple slip there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a dirty, you're a dirty, dirty whore. You want to you want to make people happy, but at the end of the day, you're a fool to tell me that if." Like, obviously, you want to do both, and you want to look after yourself, and you want to look after other people. But if someone turns around to you, it's like if someone turned around to you and said, look, mate, I love what you're trying to do, but for the rest of your life, you can either spend your whole life making yourself happy or making other people happy, and you can't do both. Don't tell me you wouldn't choose yourself. Yeah, sure, that's a byproduct yeah. by making yourself happy. If you make yourself happy, you radiate positive, positive vibes, and people can pick up on that. So actually, by looking after yourself in a healthy way, you can actually kind of be a role model and actually possibly help others along the way. Emmett, I would say to you, would you consider rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That, that's like uh, a... Greg, what would you do? What oh, would you do? We're going for this. You're, yeah. you're, One, you're two, it. three, go. We Sorry. can't see your hand. Go again. One, two, three, three. go. Oh, man! Ah, oh, fuck yeah. Hands on mine. Now, okay, so I have the upper hand. What would you do in that scenario? How would you approach this? I, I have the upper hand and I'd be saying, okay, well, what day of the week is it, right? It's, it's a Wednesday. I have a little bit of teaching tomorrow. I'm, I'm thinking of doing a bit of writing. I could live without the cans. Do you really want them? Do you really oh, want you them? I have no problem letting you have the six. Because I'm that kind of bloke. That's but fair, but that's not what Rachel's asking you. Rachel's saying, either you have them or you give them to someone else. Whether well, it's a Wednesday is indifferent. <laughs> well, it could be in terms of what your to-do list or, or your uh, what you have on. But uh, so I, I would, I would, I, I'd be a good dude. I'd let Emmett have the cans, and uh, but he can't have a slice of me pizza. I, Saturday I, I, night. It is when Sorry, you put Jeff, it. Just start again. I, I like how difficult this is when you put it to the like total scenario, like Emma has. You know, I think it's all very well and good to say that on a Wednesday or whatever day that, yeah, you can have them this day and I'll get them the next day. But as he's saying, I thought it was really interested or interesting to, to hear. If you had to make the decision and you only had two decisions that you can either make yourself happy for the rest of your life or you can make the other person happy and you can't choose both, that's a, that's a bloody hard decision. Man, it's yeah. not a hard, I'm sorry, but it's not a hard decision. Because the only reason that you think it's a hard decision is because, and, and I credit you for it, and I am the same, and, and look, I like that, but everyone knows, every, like everyone here is the same. We always want to make people happy because what people please us, in a sense. But it's not that hard of a question if someone says to you, either make yourself happy for the rest of your life or make someone else happy. Because you have, like, if you're, well, if you're living a life to make other people happy at the end of the day, then you're not living your life. You're living your life as someone else. So if it's a case of life or death, like you're looking after yourself. That's not entirely true. You can get a huge amount of fulfillment from 
helping other people and then like like happiness isn't a thing happiness only comes when there's meaning in your life you know what i mean like it's not as if as we, we kind of talked to this in a previous podcast where we said like if you could have anything and, and like all of your wishes came true that that you know that would be great and i i was arguing at that point that like if that happened there'd be no meaning in your life and you wouldn't be happy so you'd get everything you wanted but you wouldn't be happy and so in this instance maybe i mean it's more kind of it's, it's more complex but like maybe you would have happiness in your life by helping other people yeah, you know? but you would also have, it could work, like, like, like Greg said, you flip the L coin on, on the other head and then you could say, oh yeah, boy, being happy in myself the whole time, I'm making other people happy anyway. Because that's what I you just, do. I mean, that's a bit of a cop out. So in this situation, it's more about like whether, um, whether everyone's happiness should be equally considered. I think, I, I, I think everyone's happiness should be considered. Yeah, it's a great starting point. I just think it's too circumstantial. It like it, it depends on the situation. Obviously, in in an ideal world, like I know I said it earlier, but look, if the six cans there, and Greg wants to have the cans, like he said, Jarvis going to give it to him because that's a that's a minuscule thing. But at the end of the day, like when it's a life or death situation, you like you have to look after yourself. That's mm-hmm. why it's circumstantial. You have to look yeah, after. Let's yourself. say it's post-apocalyptic and it's like the last tin of beans. Exactly. And, and you're on the point of starvation, and you're even beginning to flirt with the, the idea of becoming a cannibal. Exactly. You know, then, then I understand. Um, I don't know what rock, paper, scissors do it in that situation. It would. You've got what it, it, Sorry, Emmy. If you look at what's happened during the pandemic, that's just, you know, that we're in the middle of, um, at, right at the beginning of it, like how people reacted in, like at that standpoint, that's exactly how what Emma is saying here. People were completely selfish and we're going in and just absolutely raiding um supermarkets and it was kind of post-apocalyptic at that stage and nobody was really interested in other people's happiness they were just interested in that uh i need to survive yeah strange this, people people descend into that kind of survival mode and uh and, and many will trample over others to survive it's, it's not yeah. the way i'd be inclined but there could there can come a point where you go, you have to be committed to something. So I'd be kind of of that uh, that humanist mindset that I'm the center of my own universe and, and I should look after my own happiness first. I mean, I want to radiate good vibes. I want to look after people. I, I love helping people out if they're stuck with something. But uh, I suppose the, the starting point has to be, I have to look out for number one, really. I don't mean exactly. in selfish, I just mean to make sure that I'm happy. So you're saying that you, you don't view any everyone's happiness equally that yours comes first so then so on a political scale how does that work in terms of governing people that's yeah, a false that's, that's a fucking that's a serious question mm-hmm. but that's a false equivalency that's a that's that's not that compared to two of them situations yeah it's, the same, it's the same principle mm. it's not really though because like your own is dependent on the situation like my own happiness went in terms of last fucking rowley out of a box of rowleys is much different to my happiness when it comes to little views. Does that make sense? Like, they're two, they're two completely different situations. I would have two completely different right. thoughts. If you push them to the absolute point, like, you're looking at, like, that, that, that scenario of there's a certain amount of cans or there's a certain amount of food that can only go to one area, say, of the of the population in the country. How do you divide it up? Does it a certain like if, then if you change it around to the like the GDP of a country, there's a certain amount of money. Like, uh, where does that money go? It's it's going to affect somebody's going to lose out. You know what I mean? And that's why, I mean, like in, in Ireland at the moment, like the last election, why so many people voted for change because they didn't feel that the money was being distributed proportionally to the, the happiness of the whole country. They felt that there was disproportionately being given to a certain part of society. Um, and that's what neoliberalism is all about, you know, the trickle down economics that does not work. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, hard capitalism allows for that, you know, kind of sells, you, it sells your possibility, sells your happiness, whatever. But it, it, it ultimately leads to a chasm, a, dispar- a disparity of wealth will invariably or naturally happen, you know what I mean, within that. And then if you change change your head on it and you go egalitarian or kind of like a communist regime, 
people will succumb to, to greed. I mean, that it, it, set, it sets itself up for some kind of dictatorship. Yeah. Or, or, greed. Or, or, or idealism and romanticism. And, and somebody has to then be the, the dictator, you know. Have you seen that? Have you watched that new film? It's the platform. I believe it's on, it's on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Spanish film. Yeah. No, it's just good. It goes into that a bit, the greed that exists within capitalism. But for change to be implemented, uh, you end up not, you end up kind of questioning the motives of the, the protagonist within it. I don't want to give too much away. It's, it's a good watch anyway. So, um, if we go back to your situation with the, you know, your, your street is basically screwed because the government need to build an amazing new transport route through it and you're getting booted out of your house, but the rest of the area is not really affected. It's going to be amazing for Dublin. Do you think your opinion should be taken into account in the same way as everyone else's or differently? Um, well, first and foremost, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's a fucking difference. Um, it could be homeless. I know. I know. But what am I going to, like, what am I going to do? Well, realistically, it's probably... I tell you the first thing, the first thing you do, put your nipple away, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, though, what am I gonna do about it? You know what I mean? Well, like, you probably like, have a saying, compulsory purchase scheme. Well, let's say like water rates or like anything that people are like, oh, we're gonna implement this. It's gonna be great for everyone. And, and then there's a subset of society who are like, well, hang on a second, this is not so good for us. Well, that's what I mean. What what part am we in? How about can I can I pose a question here? How about right? The country said that there'd be no more social welfare payments. Okay. Because by by taking the social welfare payments away from everybody else, Jeff, your we can um, infer- in, your internet's really bad. There, can you repeat that? Oh no! Am I back again? Can you hear me? I can hear. You. <laughs> He's out. He's out of here. He's this gone. better? Am I back? <laughs> you're, hey, you're, never there. you're sneaking in the back door here. You're a ghost, Jeff. Situation. <laughs> Just another yeah. moniker for him. The ghost. Turn that camera back on and stop being a spoo for me. The camera's on, isn't it? Ghost yeah, there you go. There you go. You're all right now. Your champagne sauce is gone. I can't say. Uh, what I was saying is, like, say the government said, okay, we're going to stop all social welfare payments, and by doing so, the the middle and the high level of the country are going to get. Um, free healthcare so that like proper like better than nhs and it's prime healthcare but then there's going to be no social welfare payments for the for anybody they're going to have to take that off it so then a small like, are we talking about un- like unemployment yeah un- unemployment pay- payments yeah so there's so many questions that i have to ask there so one of them would be would that include people who are on welfare for being incapable of working or is uh, it just people people that are not working yeah all of them yeah yeah so like the, so any social welfare payments and it, it includes pensions as well then. yeah then I, i'm completely not having that like i'm not having that there's only, even, a, even, there's only a small section of society that yeah that, no, no i'm not having i'm not having and, yeah, and, I, and I wouldn't even like i would like because i like i wouldn't even be affected by it that's what i'm trying to say it's circumstantial i would be part of the majority in that situation but i still wouldn't be having any of it but this is what I'm trying to say. That's much different to a bag of cans in a shop. That's why it depends. It really depends. Because if, if like, why do I need to, like, would I need to get better health care or would I rather, like, people who are pensioners not receive payment? Like, it's two completely different things. Man. It like, probably you, depends you can't on how you're thinking. Yeah, but, like, it's it's just, it's not, it's, you can't equate the two situations. It's, it's a mindset based on circumstantial, like, on circumstances, which is why I'm trying to say to you that in some ways it's human behaviour and then in some ways you're looking out for the great or good of people. I, I think you're right. Um, I think in this situation you have to compare like for like and um, and decide is is everyone's happiness worth the same? So like say in the, in the situation with the cans, like I'll, I'll kind of go like I'm not really, the cans aren't going to make me as happy as a bottle of wine. So I'll let Emma have them or Greg. Um, the ice cream, you know, I let Jeff have the ice cream because it's gonna make him way more happy, happier than if I eat the ice cream. 
so it's more about like comparing like for like and and deciding is everybody's happiness worth the same or should it be considered in the same way exactly yes yeah. yeah i'm in agreement with you there but it's just it depends on the on the situation but like the situation being that that like if there's a really uncomfortable situation where you had to so set, like as you said like earlier on the podcast that it went to the like the infinite degree where it was you know you had to choose whether you were ever going to drink cans ever more or you were going to give all your cans away to somebody and you would never drink cans again. Yeah. Like, that, that's, that's I, mean, kind I of, guess that's kind of what, like, you know, people who are vegetarian or who give up things, like, on ethical grounds, they, they decide to give up things that they like in the interest of making other people's lives yeah. better or... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, like, this happiness is more important. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good starting point, isn't it? To go, you have to weigh up every situation, take, <clears throat> like, look at every situation in its own merits. But, like, that's a good point, Jeff, that you were bringing up. Like, if you have the, the middle and the top end, there would be people within that that would go, you know, fuck this, you know what I mean? Let, let's, we, let's all benefit and kind of lose the lower tier of society if we're all going to benefit, you know what I mean? And then, like, that's what kind of creates the vibes. I'm, I'm also thinking that that will work the other way. Like, if somebody, if if all somebody needs to be happy is, like, you know, a small payment every week, which is, like, 150 quid or whatever it is, if that's all they need to be happy, then is that, is that okay if there's also someone who needs a payment of 750 a week it's it's compl- compl- is that the same is the, if they have the same levels of happiness should they be considered in the same way I, i'm trying to say that that's kind of it yeah because it, <clears throat> happiness is difficult to measure everyone has a different form of it so that's not a bad way like I, i'd be happy enough to live in the i don't place a lot of importance on money anyway so once i have grub and, and, a, and a roof over my head that's my starting point and cans. And, and cans and cans and anything else is kind of more luxury based you know but that's I'm not to sustain holidays and, and running two cars you know what i mean but greg that's that's maslow's hierarchy of needs it's the same for everybody that the base level is the stuff that keeps them secure the food mm-hmm. uh warmth housing and then as you're going up the, the level of, of needs in maslow it goes to like being challenged and, and being able to be creative and, and stuff like that so it depends on the, I think what happens then is where like greed comes in and we've been fed this narrative that we need things, you know, like where I think I'm wondering after this pandemic, how people are going to react to the things that they actually need mm-hmm. and actually things that, that make them happy because we haven't had accessibility to so much, you know, I know a lot of people are, are shopping online and stuff, but like, I, I I have really, I've actually saved more money now than any stage of my life because I haven't been doing the things that before would I, I, I thought were making me happy, but I'm kind of questioning now, do they? You know? mm. like, no, I, I think that's a good question, like, or, or, or kind of good, good angle to look at it. Like, will people be able to maintain what we've learned? Like the idea of reevaluation, reconnection with, with people, and also being more in the present. Like that's definitely one thing I sense now, being more in the present moment. But two or three weeks of normality, normality, do you just descend back into patterns? 100% mentality. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to happen with this pandemic for the first maybe, maybe month or two, everyone's going to be mad sound and all bleeding, lubby duffy and all this. And then after a while, oh, you, 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 trickle back, back in. The... Sorry? Like getting back with an X. Exactly, you're gonna be in that first one that's here of booking. Oh, yeah, everything is grand, we all love each other, and then everyone's gonna go back to the way they were, and that's all right. Because as MJ said, it why, why tell them that it's human nature, human <laughs> nature, ladies and gentlemen. That's good. <laughs> I, I, I don't like agreeing with Emmett, I really, really don't, but I think apart from the timeline, I would agree. I mean, if you look at like the lessons that were learned after World War Two, 
and the, the UN being formed and the whole thing of, of the world not, not going to shit again like I mean all of those lessons have have been forgotten already and which is like is it two generations they say that all the lessons not like, that long yeah exactly yeah yeah so two yeah. generations of the lessons that you've learned are gone and that's the case at the moment and you're, you're, we're kind of living through that and you're seeing how politics has been formed and like uh, I, you know how the British government are going on, on at the moment is just I never thought that I would be alive to see a, a, a government act. Uh, so I do agree with Emmett, but just, you know, yeah, what is going on? Uh, but just not I'm with playing, the time. He's playing the blinder today, isn't he? So what do you do? How long do you reckon it's going to take for, for, for everyone? Like, how long do you think it's going to take and everyone to be back normal? About two weeks. <laughs> I'd yeah, say like, two months. It depends how long it goes on for, I suppose. i say two months. 100% humans. But you look, mate, you even, like, you even see it now. Like, people, like, people are saying, oh, you know, we need to look after one another. Let's just say social distancing, for example. Everyone's saying, oh, we need to have social distancing. Then a few bleeding jars get into the equation and everyone's all over each other. And it's happening the whole time, man. People, like, it's quite, I'm not going to say it's fake, but people sometimes get caught up, in, like, all emotions are temporary. And people get caught up in their emotions for, for, like so much that they'll be so kind of feeling the emotions of love and happiness and joy and connections like they used to prior to lockdown. And because they've been starved, it is they're going to come back. And that, that it's like the novelty, it's fresh and it's there. And we're okay. all there. We have <laughs> less than a minute left, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, so, last words do you think everyone's happiness should be considered equally? Yes or no? Emma? No, fuck them. Look after yourself. Greg? I would be of the starting position that yes. yes I love that they said yes or no when everyone was making a sentence. Ah, uh, Jeff? I'd love to say yes, but I, 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 I probably don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I'd Go be on, like... Jeff. 